Hey guys, this is Watch from the MW Show and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Hackintosh. Before you begin, you just want to make sure that you have a couple of things already determined uh, before you install Mac OS X onto your PC-based hardware. First and foremost, you're going to have to check and make sure you're running an Intel-based processor on your computer. Uh, the, the Mac OS X really only supports Intel-based processors and Intel-based uh, chipsets. Specifically, what works really well is the new P55 chipset, so any motherboard that's uh, based on P55 works really well. So if you have a Core i7, Core i3, and Core i5, that specific hardware really works really well with the Mac OS X operating system. The other thing that you're going to need is a copy of Mac OS X Snow Leopard. Now this is only $30. I would recommend going out and buying it since it's only $30. It's not really worth torrenting since you get the full operating system uh, just for $30. So it's definitely uh, well worth it to just go to your retail store and just buy off a Mac OS X. So just before we begin the installation process, there's just a couple of things we have to make a note of before we start. Firstly, we want to make sure that we only have one graphics card connected into our primary PCIe slot and that only one monitor is plugged into that. You can do this with dual monitors, but it works a lot better with one for the installation process. And you should remove any extra RAM above 4 gigabytes. If you do have more RAM, you could always put back more in after the installation process is complete. And it's best to remove any additional hard drives besides the one that you're going to install Mac OS X on and remove any extra USB peripheral devices besides the keyboard and mouse. It is also recommended that any extra PCI cards that are not Mac compatible are also removed to avoid any complications. This of course excludes the graphics card. And best to have an empty drive when you're installing Mac OS X. Of course you are going to be partitioning and formatting that drive. And if you're wiping any kind of drive, it's always best to back up any important information. So the first step is go to Tony Max 86 blog and go ahead and download the latest version of iBoot. And uh, you can just go ahead and save that. What we want to do is uh, make a DVD or CD that contains the ISO file in there so you can use any kind of image burner. Or you could always copy it onto a disk and burn it that way. Once you have your iBoot disk made, you want to make sure that you have it in the optical drive, restart your computer, and set your BIOS to boot from the optical drive. So that way we have priority for the iBoot to, uh, to do its magic. So let's see what the actual process looks like when you actually do it on the computer. Now go ahead and put in the iBoot disk that we just made into your optical drive. And uh, you want to find out how to get into your BIOS. In my case, I just have to press delete. Your BIOS might be different. But once you're into the BIOS, the layout will depend upon the type of motherboard you have. I have an MSI-based motherboard, so the arrangement looks something like this. But relatively, motherboards look kind of similar. But what uh, we need to do is go into the boot sequence. In my case, I have to go into advanced BIOS features, go into my boot sequence, and make sure you want to make sure the optical drive is set to uh, primary boot. And uh, you can set up your hard drive to be secondary, but it really doesn't matter. And you want to make sure that, of course, you have uh, one hard drive connected into your SATA ports. And after that, you can press F10 and save. And now it should boot up from the iBoot disk. So once you get to this prompt, what you want to do now is take out the iBoot disk that's in our optical drive and replace it with the install DVD of Snow Leopard. And uh, what you want to do now is press F5 on your keyboard to initiate the process. And you should now see the install icon instead of the iBoot icon. And you can go ahead and press enter to initiate the install process. And now the disk should be loading up. And once the initial load-up process is done, you can go ahead and select your particular language. And an important step now is to go into your Disk Utilities menu by going to Utilities and Disk Utilities. And now we want to format the hard drive to the specific format so we can in properly install Mac OS X. What you want to do is go ahead and click on your main hard drive and go on the Partition tab and you want to just add one partition so you just add one partition there and it's important that you format the drive in Mac OS extended journal and you want to rename that uh, hard drive to Snow Leopard and you could always change it later but the installation process requires this and you can go ahead and apply that setting 
And once that is done, you can just exit out of it by clicking the red button and going back to the installation process. You can just click continue there and you can agree to the terms. Go ahead and select the newly partitioned hard drive that we just made and go into customize. And here you just want to unselect all the boxes that are checked, which are not essential. So just uh, leave the one checked at the top, which is the essential one and the other ones we don't need at this point and just click OK for that. And you can go ahead and install. Installation process can vary depending on uh, different things but usually it takes about 25 minutes and when you're done it should say that it, the installation process has failed but don't worry everything's still going fine. What you want to do now is restart and you want to make sure that we put in the iBoot disk back into the optical drive so it can boot from the hard drive. So it'll just restart again and we want to make sure we have that iBoot disk back in and once we do you'll see that now we have the option to select the Snow Leopard and that's uh, from the hard drive and you can go ahead and press enter and if everything's successful you should see this uh, lovely screen over here which means we have successfully installed Mac OS 10 on our PC and you're just going to go through the initial setup process with the keyboard time and date and account information as you can see now we have successfully installed Mac OS 10. We just have gone through the initial setup process and if you have your internet still working you want to go back to Tony Max 86 blog and download a couple of files. And uh, the the two files that we need in specific if you scroll down we need the latest update for Mac OS 10 which uh, at this point is supported up to 10.6.5 and multi beast which is going to get our hardware working with uh, Mac OS 10. So you just want to go ahead and download those and put them onto your desktop. Now once you have them on your desktop, uh, what you want to do is uh, first download the uh, the latest version of Mac OS 10. So go ahead and open that image file and it should uh, download that the latest version of Mac OS 10 which should be 10.6.5. And Go ahead and open that and uh, just go through uh, the setup process over here and just agree and continue so this might take a little bit of time because it is a large file um, but uh, it, once it's done it's very important that you do not restart it, the computer it will tell you to restart the computer but you don't want to do that so just leave it aside now at this point you just want to open up your multi beast and uh, go ahead and uh, hit continue through these menus and once you get to this menu over here you want to make sure you select easy beast if you have the supported hardware and always make sure you have system utilities checked off which is important in doing this process and for specific hardware to work uh, with Mac OS 10 you want to use the advanced options and pick the specific uh, drivers for your specific motherboard now in my case I only want my audio to, to really work so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the audio menu and hit check off legacy ALC 889 and I'm also going to enable the HDA version of that driver. And I'm not going to mess around with anything too much. My graphics card I'm just going to leave alone since everything's working fine with that. And I'm just going to hit uh, go to the network section and just select um, the uh, Realtek Ethernet driver. And you can go ahead and hit continue and I'll install then. Once that's done, you can go ahead and restart your computer and, uh, and hopefully if you've done a little bit of research, everything should be fine. But if in the case that it's not, what you can actually do is go back to Tony Max 86 blog and you can uh, scroll down and grab a uh, specific DSDT for your specific motherboard. So in my case, I have an MSI motherboard and I'm just going to select the specific model and the chipset and what you want to do is right click on it and save as and uh, you just want to rename that I'm just going to change it to dsdt.aml and I'm just going to save it onto the desktop and once that is done you can go back to a uh, multi beast and you want to just uh, select the user base uh, dsdt and uh, you can go ahead and go into advanced options and select your specific hardware in this way you can select whatever specific hardware you want to enable again much like the first process but this is just using the user base DSDT now 
if in the case it still doesn't work, uh, you can get a custom beast, which is a great um, option that uh, these uh, these forum people have provided from uh, Tony Max blog, where you can submit a, a specialized request and uh, hopefully they'll get back to you as soon as possible but this is a great way to get a custom beast made if uh, if all else fails another great resource is the forms um, now the forms at tony max 86 blog is probably the best resource if you have any problems whatsoever driver based or anything in the process i highly recommend going there and you can basically i'm sure if you have any specific problems there'll definitely be somebody out there to help you if the question hasn't been answered before so, so it's a great resource Resource. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial on how to build a Hackintosh. If you have any questions whatsoever regarding anything I've talked about on this video, uh, please leave a comment down below or message us on YouTube. And uh, there's, there's, I'll put some links to some really good forums that answer a lot of great uh, Hackintosh related questions. And if you like what we do, please subscribe and we'll see you later. Take care.